What did you decide? We will discuss this more later in the semester, but according to Maxwell's equations, we must have field components that are changing in time in order to generate electromagnetic wave propagation away from an antenna. In other words, a constant battery source will not cause the antenna to radiate. Here's the antenna. We imagine the load here on the Millennium Falcon is an antenna. So here I've redrawn the transmission line to have a source that changes with time. To keep things simple, let's choose the simplest waveform we can imagine that has time variation, a sinusoid. I also generalized the internal impedance of the generator to ZG, meaning it may have both a real and imaginary part, rather than just a real part, RG. Also the impedance of the load can more generally be complex, so we'll call that ZL. What is the sinusoidal steady state? It's where we turn on our sinusoidal source and we leave it on until all the transients decay. What does this mean for our transmission line? The waves must have already propagated back and forth along the transmission line between the load and the generator enough times so that we have steady state voltages and currents along its entire length. Previously, for constant voltage sources, or short pulses, we used bounce diagrams and we tracked individual waves and reflections. So before we had V1 plus, and V1 minus, and V2 plus, and so forth and so on. Can we use that type of analysis here with a sinusoidal source? Well, no. In the steady state, all of the reflections have already occurred. And we could track all the individual reflections, but they've all, since they've already happened, there's a better way we can treat them. Also, since the source is sinusoidal, there would be more to keep track of than just the leading edge of each wave with a constant amplitude. So th that approach isn't suitable for steady state conditions. Let's see if we can use a different method of analysis for the sinusoidal steady state. For convenience, it is helpful to make two changes to our coordinate system when we're dealing with the sinusoidal steady state. First, it turns out that it is helpful to move the origin of the coordinate system so that z equals zero is at the load rather than at the generator end. One reason this is helpful is because then we can analyze what the generator sees at the beginning of the transmission line relative to what is at the end of it at z equals zero. Remember in the steady state all the reflections have already occurred so in this case the generator does know how long the transmission line is and what's at the end of it. Now having z equals zero at the load means we have negative z values everywhere along the transmission line, which is kind of annoying. What might we do about this so we don't have to keep track of an extra negative sign? Well, 